Welcome everybody to the Pokey Battle Network. Happy Friday and hopefully you are enjoying some wonderful Devin Corpse GG metas out there as we have our first Arizona Pogo PvP ranked remote coming at us this month. So we are going to be taking a look at the run here submitted by Mudkipped AZ. This is a fun, fun meta. We've got to see a lot of different playstyles. We're going to see how Mudkip Daisy takes his Surf Edge and goes to town on the entire AZ Pogo PvP. Let's take a look at that first round one and check out the new Knockout Cup. Taking a look at Mudkip's line, we are seeing Surf Fetched with Galissapod and Tentacruel as is 1-2 restricted there. Galissapod being a very strong one. Tentacruel, very interesting. We'll see how he plays that out. I like the idea behind it. We also see the G-Fisk, the uh, Marsh Stomp, and the Palace Sand. So he's brought a lot of ground typing. He definitely did not veer away from the Mud Boy. He feels though might be... Uh, Marshomp is better than Whiskash, and that's why Tentacruel is in there on that position, where his first opponent is bringing up Hitmontop. He's got Ariados, Galvantula, Alolan Raichu, Swalot, and Minin. That's right, Swole Sparse from the Arizona, uh, the Tucson uh, community here is showing up for the battles and we're getting right off the bat as it's a shiny Ariados and look at that the palace sand here getting those taps in with the mud shots and doing super effective a great lead there by uh mud kit to make the call and the deep buff goes through he gives the shield and he's going straight for the scorching sands once Palisand got Scorching Sands, it became a good opponent because Scorching Sands has a debuff and it does almost half of that health. And look at that. Marsh Stomp is in. Let's check out how Marsh Stomp's going to play. This lovely, lovely Pokemon, if you used it in the Boulder Cup, was a great, great Pokemon for Season 1 of Sylph, but it's got access to that Surf in Mud Bomb too. With Mud Bomb getting the boost, the Swamp, the Marsh Stomp, has now built up two Surfs and that Mud Bomb's going to do some super effective. So, We'll get the shield here, and now he gets to the second serve. Don't know why Ariados is still here. Maybe building up for that uh, Trailblaze. Is he going to get with the shield? No. There is no Trailblaze actually on this Ariados, as this Ariados would be great with the Trailblaze and put on that wonderful pressure. But with the moves revealed, Mudkip knows that he does not need to shield anything from Ariados. That's right, we have moves revealed in order to be right. So we're going to give up the Surf here, and we're going to get that Galvantula. Galvantula got one more Volt Switch in there. Will it be enough to take it out? Oh, yes it will, and the Surf does about half health of damage. All right, Galvantula here puts up the next Volt Switch, and the G-Fist just farmed up some real good energy. Mudkip, again, not really worried about anything. There's nothing here that's really going to affect his Mud Boy as the Fisk is going off for another Mud Bomb. The Mud Bomb boost over the last two seasons has just been so good to unlock some of these great Mud Pokemon, especially since it's such a spam move. And with, you know, when you start seeing those things happen throughout metas, you see just Pokemon battlers really wait for Devin GG metas like this to pop up so you can use these great Pokemon like Stunfisk that has Mud Bomb that's gonna spam off and you can understand and get a good feel for it. Even though it's deep up, it don't matter. He's still going to be able to not even have to shield another move here because Galvantula is rocking Volt Switch and Discharge and Lunge. And the Lunge is going to take it out. He's still got Palisand full healthy to shield. And there's only one Pokemon left in the back. And that is Raichu with no shields and a Scorching Sands coming its way. This Alolan Raichu does not want to see any like anything at all. It's got Grass Knot, but... It is super frail as a super effective Scorching Sands takes it down. A good play with the reveal of Ariados not holding Trailblaze. There was no need for Mudkip to waste any shields on uh, for Marsh Stomp. As a matter of fact, it made Marsh Stomp even 
more able to come in and play. Minin usually has a Grass Knot as well, but there is no second move on this Minin. So, Marsh Stomp feeling really sick, the, safe. The grounds are feeling really safe. Mudkip putting in some good work here and understanding that his ground type Pokemon core here going to be good. We'll see what he does in the adjustments here of Game 2. As here we go with the Palosan into the Swalot. Again, the same lineup likes what he sees. The Palosan now uh, going up against the Swalot. The Swalot does have Ice Beam, so it has a you know pressure against these Pokemon. This meta really does make you feel like, all right, I've got to go up against my counter, but I have a nuke move that could go against you. And oh, makes the call. No shield. It could have been an ice beam, but it was an acid spray as the scorching sands come plowing through. Now, this uh, Swallow was given Mudshot, so it's able to get to its energy a lot better and a lot quicker as it can get to a no, oh, so close to another ice beam, but the scorching sand comes through first. We'll find out what Swolsparce is going to do because he's going to go down two shields and that's going to put Mudkip in a great commanding lead. Going to give up the shield here thinking it's going to be that Ice Beam. And it's not double acid spray. He got baited. Swolsparce putting on the moves onto this uh, Palisade, but immediate swaps into the Marsh Stomp. And here we go. Will this be the Ice Beam? No, another acid spray. Does this swap out immediately? No, it does not swap. He does get two more taps. Then comes in with the Raichu. Now, Raichu comes in way late as that Marsh Stomp is loaded with energy. Mar uh, Raichu with the Grass Knot, but no shields to protect it as both shields were given to that Swalot earlier. Another Mud Bomb going to take the Raichu out. And there it goes. Doesn't even get to the Grass Knot. Raichu is gone. Swalot comes back. Swalot with the energy. Will it throw another Acid Spray or will this be the Ice Beam? The Ice Beam finally goes in. Mudkip finally calls the right call there. Again, just making the correct calls all throughout the matchup. Knows his counts and goes straight for another Mud Bomb. This should be super effective on that Poison Typing. Taking out the Swalot. That Swallow, real thick, real defensive, and in comes that Ariados. Again, Ariados did get Trailblaze, but it is not on Swalsparce's team here. And that is going to affect it as all the Mud Boys just are having fun. No ground Pokemon looks real afraid of anything no ground pokemon has anything to worry about now that swalot is off the table with that ice beam and here comes the scorching sands to one two ko that's gonna be two wins for mudkip and he's gonna get the win of the match but you've got to play the third battle here why do I say that? Because in these Draco Viz tournaments, when you play the third battle, you get that you could get that point which could help you in the ranking. So if everybody ties at the end of the matchup, you could actually take second place over somebody else. So always play your third battle. You can get any win possible, even if it's a 2-1 by this way. It could help put you in a better position for the ranking at the end of the tournament. Mudkip's lock, Swole Sparse is rocking those ho-ho wings, loving it. This man comes to all of the football games looking like his character, I'm not going to lie. He's a legend here in Arizona, we're very happy to have him as one of our head ambassadors here for the U of A. So we're great that we're getting these Arizona Pogo Battlers kicking off. This new meta is here, it is so exciting. We're going to have so much fun this year with the Devin GG. So, Palo Sands coming in on the Hitmon top, and that's not good. Hitmon top does have Triple Axel, but Swole Sparse does not have it on this Pokemon. Again, being able to see your Pokemon movesets now allows you to play a little better, feel a little safer, maybe not give up a shield, but it does expose the biggest weaknesses of your lineup. And this is what Mudkip's doing. Without any Trailblaze here, without any grass on that mining nor that Ariados these ground boys are having the time of their life that this Palo Sand Castle is coming up with another Scorching Sand to take out that fighter 
Here comes the mine, and it. it's shiny as well. Gotta love it with that quick attack. Mine, it also has spark. Maybe try that out with the extra damage, but the quick attack generates that energy so nicely. And there it is. The scorching sand goes unshielded. That's super effective. Oh my goodness. It's so funny. We say about these Pokemon being super, you know, fighting your counter and having a move against your counter. All the electrics, uh, well, I don't know about Heliolus, but a ton of the electrics down at the bottom all have grass moves because the meta knows it's going to require ground Pokemon. So all the electrics have some sort of moves that to fight against this. It's unfortunate though that Swole Sports doesn't as another Scorching Sand is going to take out. Looks like the Palo Sand Sweep is going to come through. GG's there, Mudkip AZ, as that round one showed real dominance. He saw his opponent didn't have anything that was going to affect these three ground Pokemon. Pokemon and he kicks us off with a great 3-0 lead in round one. Looking at round two, we are battling Sosa Flow. That's me. I'm taking on Mudkip AZ. We've got a rivalry. I'm here for it. It's going to be real interesting. Yeah, I know what he's got. We've seen his play style before. I've been playing with this lineup of him on top, Galissapod, Whiskash, G Weezing, Stunfisk, and Dugong. For the last couple weeks now in tournaments, getting a good feel for it. But Mudkip and I are rivals, so we're trying to figure out how to play against each other. We're going to get the first battle in, and he's getting the lead. It's the... Uh, Sir Fetch into the Dugong. Immediate swap after some energy, and but... There's too much energy on the Surfetch now, and I just realized the big error of my mistake as Surfetch now has almost two Leaf Blades against my ground Pokemon. This is what Swole Sparse was missing, a grass move for those ground Pokemon. As you see, the um, Sunfist, a great swap in to save you for a save swap, but not against Surfetch, and especially when it's loaded with energy. So Flow's built up so much energy. He's got about two Mud Bombs ready to go. We'll see what Mudkip does. Mudkip's going to put one shield into the first one. And here comes the second one. Will he uh, commit to the second? He does commit to the second Protect Shield. Mudkip knows that the Surfetch looks really good against two of the three Pokemon. So why not keep with the Leaf Blade? Even if Dugong was to come back, he could probably get to a Leaf Blade before Dugong gets to another charge move. We'll have to find out as we'll see what Sosflow does. It is the Dugong coming back. Two, three, four, and there's the charge move. If it's Icy Wind, this could survive. If it's Drill Run, it will KO. It is... Drill running right off the bat. Sos Flow throws all the energy. Now Dugong is empty. Glissbot comes in with one tap. A Mud Boy. Wish Cash of the Big Daddy comes out. With the X Scissor there, Wish Cash is going to take that. Woo! That is a damaging, damaging move on Glissbot right there. From Glissbot right there. And you see the Whiskash here going to throw off its first Scald. Will it get the debuff? No, doesn't. So now this x will still be as effective as before. And will this Mud Bomb be enough? Going for the Mud Bomb probably because Mudkip thinks he'll go for the Scold for the debuff. Gets that extra chunk damage. Doesn't really matter. Dukon's not really healthy to handle a third Pokemon, even if it had a Drill Run in the back for that Tentacruel. It would still need about two Drill Runs to be able to take out Tentacruel, as the Egg Scissor is going to be enough there, and another Egg Scissor is coming off. It is not looking good for Sos Flow, as it looks like two Pokemon for Mudkip AZ is going to keep him in the winner's run here, as he is now 4-0 and in this tournament right now. Four straight wins, hasn't lost yet. See how this last X Scissor will KO the Souls of Flow, and you'll see what he does to adjust in game number two. All right, we'll see how these battlers adjust here. We're going to find out what Sosa Flow does because it doesn't seem like swapping in the. Uh, <laughs> The Stunfist was a good idea. Both Whiskash and Stunfist did not want to see the Leaf Blade. Neither did Dugon. So we'll see if Sosflow makes the adjustment uh, and brings in G Weezing instead to handle that Dugong. Maybe hit him on top. But man, double, triple weak to Leaf Blade. And you just let that fetch do it. 
not good. He's going to get the triple axle using Hitmontop onto that stun fist. This is what Swole Sparse needed for his Hitmontop. The Discharge will take the Hitmontop to almost half health. And now comes the Shadow Claws with all the energy builds up. Sosa Flow is going to give extra energy onto Galissapod before he throws and dips. No shield, triple axle. That was not the call. He, and he swapped out. Oh, no. Now Galissapod's got tons of energy. He's looking great for Mudkip. Mudkip just going to throw. Let's just spam off, count till he gets to a first charge move, and then let's go. Sosa Flow. And that G Weezing gonna go straight for the first move. It is Sludge, by the way. It is not Brutal Swing. Sludge gonna be a little extra effective on the mirror there over the Brutal Swing. It does some good damage on those Galissapods. This is why he brought it out, that Poison Typing, helping out that butt, uh, doing some effective damage there. But an Aerial Ace will either draw the shield or lose the switch advantage for Sosa Flow. And another Aerial Ace is going to come out. Now Sosa Flow has to take the hit here. With this G Weezing. As the Galissapod's going to probably go down. There it goes. Sosa Flow's in the red and down a shield. With the energy Sosa Flow's going to throw onto that Stun Fizz. Now without that Mud Shot. It's not going to be super effective. Maybe Sosa Flow can get to another move. Mudkip's deciding to farm it down. He knows Sosa Flow likes to just throw. He knows it's sludge, and it's not going to be as effective. And he knows his boy uh, Sir Fetch in the back with two shields are going to be what the doctor ordered, especially when he sees the Wish Cash. Now the Mud Bomb goes off. No shield. Trying to get his boy Sosa Flow off the shield. Gives the energy of the Mud Bomb in the back and has that banked. We've got the Whisk Cash in now. Do 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 do. Gonna shoot off that Scold. Will he get the debuff? Yes, he does. So the counters aren't doing as effective. It's a Brave Bird on that Sir Fetch. Look at that going for the Leaf Blade. This is debuff, but it'd still be super effective for Big Daddy Wish Cash. So he has to give up the shield. Can he get the second debuff on it? Now, that's the real question as the next Skull's going to come off. Sir Fetch, no, and it does not debuff a second time. Before the Mud Bomb comes through, Sir Fetch gets to the Leaf Blade. He's got to tap it. Can only get one or two taps. Knew that the Mud Bomb was coming immediately from Sosa Flow because we both know that this Whiskash was Dunsies. And with no energy left onto this uh, Hitmon top, he needed one more tap there. The Leaf Blade will be able to take this out. And that will be the second battle for Mudkip AZ. Well, one more punch there on the on the G Weezing. It was so low in health. And these boys know that to the bitter end. As they're getting into this third matchup now. Hit him on top into the uh oh, the stun fist. It looks like the same mat, same lineup, same gameplay style. We're gonna get the energy. Both battlers staying in a little bit longer. The discharge is gonna go off this time. Last time the mud bomb. Uh, the discharge went off, and will he get the shield? No shield again, makes the immediate swap, and here goes one, two, Sosa Flow allowing Galispa to throw the energy again. Will he go for close combat this time, or will he go for triple axle again? Going for the triple axle again, maybe thinking that it would be close combat this time, brings in Big Daddy Whisk Cash. The x Scissor comes out immediately this time. There is no buildup of energy Boom! The x Scissor doesn't take the Wish Cash to the yellow, and here you go. Wish Cash is building and building and farming. Will he throw the Skull this time, or will it be the Mud Bomb? Gonna get the Skull. Will he get the debuff here? No. Only one debuff. It's looking like uh, Skull Proc is not in Sosa's favor of this matchup. As another x Scissor will take Wish Cash into the red now big daddy whisk cash has that mud bomb ready to go he's going shield for shield and there he is galissapod's gonna give up the shield playing it differently now mudkip usually likes to give up the shields here and does not like to be down but he's got the energy he knows what the first pokemon is it's the hit on top so he's gonna force the third pokemon to come out and it's the g weezing g weezing is gonna take the aerial ace 
and we'll have to see how this is going to play out as they play like Mudkip's play is completely different and so is Sosa Flow. Uh, Weezing's going to farm that all the way down. Has the energy. One shield apiece. Will Sosa go for the bait here? No. Banks the energy and swaps immediately. And here comes the fetch. With the energy goes. Does not let it go. Sir Fetch knows he's not going to throw a close combat. It's a close combat! Hitmon top. Ready to go. With the energy banked on the Weezing. Hitmon top able to do the damage and throw the close combat to take out the Sir Fetch. And Hitmon top or is gone. G Weezing comes in with the first move. And the shield comes through for a bait. What a sludge bait. The mud bomb comes in. He's got two and a half mud bombs. Sosa flow. Can the wheezing take at least one mud bomb and get to that play rough in time? Oh, he taps, but it was a... I don't know if that CMP as the play rough looks like it's coming through. And there it is. Sosa flow will take the first win off of... Uh, Mudkip AZ. Mudkip will be 2-0 going into round three with this exciting lineup. He's able to shake hands with his partner and get ready for his next opponent. Ba -ba -ba! It is the finals. Devin Hundreds versus Mudkip Daisy. Mudkip Daisy and Davin are both 2-0 here. We'll find out what they're going to do in this battle as Davin's brought a great lineup here. Uh, rocking that Polyrath as his number one. Did bring out Big Daddy Wishcast because he knows how important Mud is and brought out the Charger Bug. So he's again bringing two restricted and his bottom slot three are the Beedrill, the Raichu, and the Melodic. Melodic rocking that Dragon Tail, the Hyper Beam, and the Surf. We'll find out if that's even going to bother Mudkip AZ as he's going to take on David here. Bringing out that palace and leading exactly right into that Raichu. Now, again, we said Raichu. This Raichu is rocking the Grass Knot. As David has the right Pokemon for all, right movesets for all of his Pokemon here. And he brings in the Polyrath with that Icy Wind and Scald and Galissapod meets it. But Galissapod's got Aerial Ace. Now, Polyrath knows Galissapod's got Aerial Ace, but it's going to allow it. As you can see, about half health is gone. Galissapod there, one of those great Shadow Claw users that's got that uh, flying Pokemon against those fighters. A great anti-fighter Pokemon for sure. Doesn't even care about the Scold. No debuff procs onto that um, Galissapod. So we'll find out what Mikup's going to do. As I believe he's just going to shield and farm down. And it looks pretty good there. And David knows it as well. So he's going to say, hey, hey, hey you're going to farm down me? I'm going to make it so you can't, you know... Do as much damage to the rest of my team. You're going to be debuffed here with that Icy win. Two charge moves locked. Galissapod ready to go. X Scissor comes through. Uh, we saw get ready. We're seeing what he's going to be doing. And it is Big Daddy Wishcast. We saw again Big Daddy Wishcast took that X Scissor. Right you coming in again remember this is debuffed a volt switch did come through on that water bug pokemon so it should ko it there it goes and look at that once you revealed that it was sir daddy Wizcash in the back with a couple taps it was good but you lost energy and now you've got to worry about a surface but before that we've got a scorching sands coming through on that alolan raichu gives up the shield and that's not good for big daddy Wishcash as uh Mudkip AZ is now in a great driver position. There's Thunderbolt and Trailblaze, and the Trailblaze isn't going to be enough, and another Scorching Sands is ready to go. But will it? Will he go for it? Will he shield it? No, no Thunder Punch shield there. And these are boosted Thunder Punches now. Two, three... Four! Oh, before he can get to another charge move, the Raichu is stuck in between movesets as a Leaf Blade comes through. And now Big Daddy Wishcash has to deal with a Leaf Blade. There's a shield left on Sir Fetch as well. Great job by Mudkip Daisy to understand that he can take the damage and go straight for the Leaf Blade and take out that David. 
first battle there to Mudkip Daisy. All he needs is one more, and he'll take home the first Devin Corpse Knockout Cup Championship here in Arizona Pogo PvP. Like a sir, closing it out. Like a sir. Oh, like a sir. If you're having a hard day and you're thinking battling's the way to go here in Knockout Cup, you've got only one Pokemon to look for here and you're number one. Like a sir. Oh, like a sir. Sir Fetch there is doing wonders here for Mudkip DayZ, giving him great coverage and being that wonderful support there for that Galissapod. That Wombo combo there has been absolutely dynamite so far, and it's only a matter of time before that Sir Fetch takes home the trophy. Like a sir. We'll have to see what Davin does in response to the Sir Fetch close. Will he bring the Wish Cash lead? Both Pokemon in the back was the Poliwrath and the Wish Cash. So he doesn't really. He had an ABB lineup. Davin's team's really fun here with an ABB of a lot of sorts. BB as in. Uh, electric, BB as in water, BB as in mud, BB as in, gr like, whatever you want. There is a lot of play Davin's got with ABB lineup. Problem is, that Sir Fetch does not care. And I will say that in, like, a negative way. I'm just saying, he is there, he's ready to hit everything that Davin's got, because he's got that Leaf Blade that hits so well. Not only that, he's got that Brave Bird. If he's trying to one-shot those fighters, trying to one-shot those Bug-type Pokemon, this is an incredible, incredible uh, gameplay here by both of these battlers. This is what we love about Knockout Cup in these slots, is that you're allowed to play your playstyle, as both these battlers have two different teams that are here in the finals. We're going to see the Palo Sand, though, right into the Charger Bug here. Let's go. Charger Bug gets one Volt Switch and dips out immediately as the Dragon Tail, three of them come through, and the Scorching Sand's going to go off. Not going to get shielded, taking Melodic to half health. The fourth swipe goes through. Remember, it is Hyper Beam and Surf. Counters are there for that Water-type Pokemon. This is a Water-type Pokemon. Indeed, with that Leaf Blade ready to go, he's going to shield the first Surf. Probably going to shield the second Surf, too, if that has to come through. No, not even going to allow him to go for that second Surf. Going to go straight for that Leaf Blade. Will this be enough? Will this get shielded? He gets chilled for shield here. And, oh, got an extra tap. And is this the hyper beam? We'll have to find out as the last shield comes through. Nope, just another surf. The counter finally takes out that last little bit of health from Melodic. And the energy now is ready for this, uh, for this surf fetch. There's Galissapod tapping, though. It's close. Close to the Galissapod. Two. Three. Now we know the move sets on this Raichu. He's got the Volt Switch in. He knows it takes a while because that's a five, four turn move. In comes Leaf Blade. Will the immediate swap come? He gets the last shield. No, and he gets another Leaf Blade in. Sir Fetch doing damage. Oh my god, he's like, I don't care. Do what you need to as a Cybo KO. So mean. He's like, you you were mad. You didn't want Charge Bug to see this uh, Palisand. And here it is. Charge Bug's going to see the Palisand. Avoiding uh, Galissapod against that Charge Bug is great. Those Volt Switches are going to destroy that bug. And there's nothing Charger Bug can throw at Palisand unless it had Crunch. And Charger Bug doesn't. It has X Scissor and Discharge. Crunch is available for Charger Bug, but Palisand Scorching Sand is going to give Mud Kipped AZ the win. The grand final win. So GG's there on game two. And looks like we're locked in on game three, ready to go. That's great. Don't even need to change anything else. Will Davin change anything else? Again, we've got to play your third game. Always play your third game. Cannot go without playing that third game. Super important will get you that point. Mudkip Daisy showing that the 20,000 battle scrims that he's had 
over the two months that he's had his Discord group up and running is proving nothing but valuable, valuable, valuable. Um, On the live stage in Play Pokemon before, he was wearing the incredible mask with the glasses. He's there for it. He's ready and he is a battler. He loves battling and his scrims are proving to show that you can do whatever you want as long as you know what your team can take. And that's what he's doing. He has Tentacruel. I didn't even use it. We got to see Marsh Top once as he gets right into it. And it looks like the Raichu is here for this Scorching Sands Ghost Pokemon again. Uh, we've not seen a Shadow Ball thrown either. All he knows is he just needs to keep going. Scorching Sands. The attack debuff. He finally gets a debuff on the Scorching Sands. Right, she's going to throw the charge move. It's a debuff tack move, so not going to be as effective. The Thunder Punch, super effective still, but not into the deep red, which means he can get to the X's or forcing either a shield on this psychic Pokemon or KOing this thing. And he's going to get the shield. Look at the damage in the deep red now. This Alolan Raichu is with no shields left on David. It looks like it's Sir Fetch time. First shield coming. First shield is a coming. Gonna get that Thunder Punch shielded. And he brings in the Charge Bug. And we said he's got the Brave Bird for a reason, folks. We'll see how much the Brave Bird's gonna do. Oh, he's building up for it. You can... Feel it in the air, the energy, the training, the practice, the build-up. Ah, yeah! K.O. Super effective. Defense severely fell. Doesn't matter anymore. Raichu's got one punch and it's out. And the last Pokemon is that big daddy wish cash who doesn't want to see a leaf blade. Undercharging it too. Look at Wish. Oh, he's gonna get to a second leaf blade. He's got it locked and loaded. He's playing with his food now. Mudkip AZ dominating, showing you that you can do, be the best of the best just as long as you scrim and practice and know your team and your lineup. This was such a beautiful display of battling in this tournament. And GG's to Mudkipped AZ. Congratulations as he whoops David Hurdles and dominates this entire AZ Pogo PvP. Congratulations, Mudkip, on an amazing 3-0 run. This meta was so much fun, and I thank Devin Corpse GG for bringing back so low-ranked metas to battlers and their local regions. We have a great leaderboard getting kicked off now, and Mudkip has secured himself a 3-0 victory here with that championship, so he's going to be seeing himself high on the rankings. There are so many great, great things to take away from this matchup. You got to see that Surfesh was very dominant in a lot of stuff. And the fact that he had nothing but shields and energy for it was just all he needed to do. So what did he do? He added spam with uh, Marsh Stomp. He had a Glissapod. He had the Stun Fisk. He had so many great things that could put that pressure down on his opponents, grab their shields, and then come in with Sir Fetch and like a Sir, oh, sweep the teams. And that's what he did. So congratulations to Mudkip AZ on an amazing 3-0 run. Thank you to Devin Corpse GG on providing battlers with fun solo metas for 2024. Be on the lookout as more metas are coming our way. Thank you all for watching the Pokey Battle Network. I hope you enjoyed this amazing run. Be sure to check out Mudkip's Discord as it is nothing but scrimology down there and the Devin Corp's all social media and be in touch with what the metas are as new metas are coming every month.
I'm going to be doing all my stuff on all of that. Devin Corpse, GG, and Solo Metas on top of what's coming in the scenes and the battling. So be on the lookouts. Be sure to subscribe or like this video if you want more of these Devin Corp GG tournament runs. Thank you all for watching the Poke Battle Network. I'm Sosa Flow, and like always, keep on battling.